Privacy and anonymity are something we take for granted, but online they just don't exist. If you have a phone, home internet, or a computer, no matter how careful you are, there's significant information about you online. Someone who's interested in your habits, finances, and predilections can get access to that data. Hi, I'm John Miller, the Deliberate Engineer. I was a software engineer in big tech for 30 years at companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Oracle. I spent a good part of that time designing, implementing, and testing security products. I worked in IPsec, TLS and password-based authentication and authorization, and confidentiality and integrity for new network protocols. I also worked in internet ads and web technologies. All this is a fancy way of saying I'm giving you information based on direct experience and research. Everyone watching this video connects to the internet one way or another. Most of us use the internet for email, games, streaming, shopping, banking, social media, and so on. It's so ubiquitous and so much easier than the alternatives that it just doesn't make sense to do anything else. When you use most applications and visit any web page, information about your device and your activities are saved remotely. Some of this data is closely held, only accessible by you and the publisher of the game or the news company, whatever site you're visiting. Some of it goes to third parties, either directly from your client or is sold and shared by the company who owns the game or website that you are visiting. This is all perfectly legal and often described in the terms of service you click past in the app or ignore on the website. If you ever read the terms of service, it's so general and scary that it probably gives the company the right to rifle through your house and sleep in your bed at night. Each piece of information on its own isn't a big deal. It's what they reveal when they're combined together that's the problem. Companies like advertising aggregators have some of the biggest collections of data about you. They often get told what you're searching for or shopping for. They know what kind of devices you have and what you do with them. They can, in general, figure out your household income, age, whether you have kids, your credit rating, and even your address. This information is insanely valuable to them for targeting advertising, a multi-billion dollar industry. Just spent 30 minutes watching anime? You're probably gonna see some anime-related ads. Reading lots of financial advice and visiting your brokerage accounts? Don't be surprised to see financial-related ads. And don't even get me started on browsing car reviews. All of these ads make big money for the advertisers, the aggregators, and for the sites providing space for them. How do the sites correlate this data without access to your accounts at the various places you use? Your browser and your device both have fingerprints and a set of properties that describe the device and its operating environment. This is commonly collected by apps and uploaded to their hosts and are shared with all the websites that you visit. It's not necessarily a unique ID, but when you do a little data mining, it can be pretty straightforward to correlate normal web activity and application use, even when you're using incognito or anonymous browsing. This is true for a given person or for a given device. If you're curious about what all this data is and how it uniquely identifies you, there's several websites that show you the typical data gathered. I've linked a couple of these in the description down below. Since people don't like being spied on, there's an industry built around trying to make that harder to do. There are browsers and VPN products which make it more difficult for aggregators to gather this information and identify you. On the surface, these provide you some level of anonymity from the idle curious and the most egregious invasions of your privacy. I'm personally skeptical that this does much good. You won't see as many signs that the websites you browse or the game you played is affecting your ad targeting, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. What's worse, your new pattern of behavior makes you far more interesting to governmental and criminal organizations. Systems such as Tor and other VPNs are only as good as the organization hosting them, and also how careful you are in what you do on them with what applications. If the service has high intelligence value, such as Tor, you can bet that governments and criminal organizations have their hooks into them. This can be direct, bribing people, or paying someone loyal to your organization to get a job in there. Or it can be indirect, through simple hacking, exploits, or just participating uh, in the system. For peer-to-peer -peer systems, for example, that rely on the user's computers, if you have enough computers in there, you can monitor everything going on. This all sounds pretty bad, and it is, but it's no worse than your life has always been in terms of agencies and companies knowing about you and being able to find out more. That's just the way it is. So should you give up on privacy? <laughs> of course not. Just like you still lock your doors and windows and close your curtains, Take reasonable steps to protect yourself. This will make you less likely to be taken advantage of. You don't have to run faster than the lion to be safe. If you're faster than the person next to you, that's usually good enough. Be well informed and realistic. 
Remember that you have very little privacy online and act accordingly. Some people have multiple personas, like a game account, your personal account, and an account that you use to troll or cheat at games. Bear in mind that these are trivial to correlate and to identify as being held by the same person. Be very careful about doing anything illegal or unsavory online because your computer and your browser are certainly not protecting you. Don't waste too much time worrying about it. Be aware, be sensible, then shrug and get on with your life. In terms of quality of life and the price paid, you're light years better off with the current environment than we were without the internet. Trust me, I'm a doctor, well, a PhD, and I was around before the internet and I remember what it was like. Hi, this is John. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please think about subscribing so you get notified of my future videos. Also, if you are interested, you might want to check out the video I have linked here. Thanks and keep on pushing forward.